Okay, so you've got two scenes, and now you want to make sure that when you switch from one scene to another, it looks smooth and it looks professional. And what we call this is the transition. And transitions are basically the way in which it appears to your viewers when you switch from one scene to another. Now, I've got two scenes here. I've got scene one and scene two. And when I switch from scene one to scene two at the moment, Nothing really happens, it just flicks to the next scene, and there's no nice, smooth, quality transition between the two. It's just a hard cut, and that's what we call this transition here. It's called a cut, because you're literally cutting off scene one and going straight to scene two. Now, what if you want to change this transition? You want to make it look a little bit nicer for your viewer. Now we need to take a look at scene transitions. If you look in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen right here, you'll see scene transitions. And what I'm going to do for this actually is move my webcam up a little bit so that you guys can see because it's right behind me on this tutorial. Uh, so you can see right here, here is scene transitions. And I want to change the transition for scene one to scene two. At the moment, before we do anything else, I'm going to explain that we can only change and only have one scene transition in OBS Studio for all of your scenes. Now, with a plugin that we're going to discuss later on in the course in the advanced section, you can have different transitions for every scene. But for right now, we're going to have one transition for all of your scenes on OBS Studio. So, at the moment, our transition for all of our scenes is the cut transition, this boring cuts from A to B. Let's have a look and see if we can change that around. So let's go to scene transitions. We'll click on the drop down menu and you'll see that we have cut, fade, swipe, and slide. These are all the default transitions that OBS Studio gives to you. Uh, let's check out what they do one by one. So here's cut. Like I said, simple cut between the two. Here is fade, like it says on the tin a very smooth, simple fade between your two scenes. It's actually very, very nice uh, and uh, just looks smooth to the viewer. Underneath the actual transition choice, I have the duration box. And here I can change the length of the transition. So if I want it to be uh, quite a long transition, I can do 1,400 milliseconds, for example, and it will take ages to transfer from one to the other. Quite nice, actually. Very, very easy to look at and nice on the eye. Uh, if I want it to happen really quickly, obviously, if I put it to zero, it's just going to be a cut. So let's put it to 200, and you'll see a very, very, very quick fade between A and B there. So that's fade and the duration of the fade. You've got swipe. Uh, swipe is, let's put that back up to 500 so we can see the transition. Swipe is just swiping from one scene to the other. What's happening is the scene you're on is moving away and it's revealing the other scene. So as B moves away, it's revealing the second scene. The second scene is not moving, it's stationary where it is. And the first scene just moves away to reveal it. And that's important to remember because uh, in... Well, you'll see in a second. Let's switch this to a thousand milliseconds and just look at that a little bit more slowly. So that's swipe. You see, B will move across and it will reveal A. There it is. Now, if I go into the properties, I can change the direction of the swipe from left, right, up, down, swipe in, uh, and I can preview the transition by using this button right here. Let's keep this on left right now and click OK. Now, the next one left is slide, and slide is very similar to swipe, except the second scene actually moves with the first scene. So B will move down, and A will move down with it. A is not in a stationary position. It will actually move down with it. So you see this? The second scene actually moves down as if they are coming one after the other. Whereas if I go back to swipe, the second scene is just stationary. It stays exactly where it is. So they're very, very similar. Uh, to the untrained eye, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. But that is swipe and slide. Now, move is a, a plugin, which I will teach you about a little bit later on. But the other two transitions that I wanted to show you here are stinger and fade to color. Let's do fade to color first. Uh, and I'm going to call this fade to pick a color, any color. Let's do fade to pink. Why not? And I'm going to select the color as pink. Peak color point, we're going to leave it 50% for now. And you can click preview transition, it will fade to pink and then to your second scene. If I go 100%, peak color point, 
it actually changes the duration almost of the transition. So I'd always keep this at 50 if you can. Obviously, if you want to change the color, we can. If I go to a lime green, I can preview and it was flitched to a, a lime green. And there we have it. I'll press OK. And there is our fade to green. Now, most people will use this in a way where they want to fade to black or white. So if I go properties and fade to black, you can see that it's actually got a really nice professional feel about it. It goes from one scene to the other very, very smoothly, very nicely. Now, finally, and probably the most asked for uh, transition tutorial that I, that I ever get is the Stinger transition. Before we show you, let me explain to you what a Stinger transition is. A Stinger transition is basically a transition, a customized transition for you where a video file will be part of the transition. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a stinger. The best way for me to explain this is to show it to you. I'm going to go browse and I have a couple of already pre-made stinger transitions here that I've made. Uh, I actually made stinger transitions for every single Premier League football club uh, in England. So let's, let's say I want to add an Arsenal stinger transition. What this transition does is it closes some doors the Arsenal logo appears, and then the doors open again, and it's the second scene. So we're going to add that video. It's a WebM file. I'm not going to go into how to create stingers right now, but you can download stingers online. Uh, there's lots of free ones. You go on YouTube, search them. There's free downloads everywhere for stinger transitions. Uh, transition point, I'm going to set to 1200. This is the default transition point for stinger transitions. I'm going to click OK. And now, when I switch from scene 2 to scene 1, we should in theory, have a nice video file to take us from scene one to scene two or scene two to scene one. This video file is transparent. This is how it works. If this was just a generic video file, it would show the video and then the video would disappear. But because this video file is a WebM and it's transparent, you actually get to see the doors close on the scene, the logo appear, and then the doors open to reveal the second scene. So let's have a look at that a couple more times. Very nice. Very nice if I do say so myself. Now, one of the properties that we changed there was the transition point. And at the moment, it's at 1200. And what this is doing is it's telling OBS when to switch the scene. Because if I set this to zero, it's telling OBS, right, switch the scene straight away and watch what happens. B appears before the doors close. So that's no use, is it? Let's have a look again. A already appears. So what we're trying to tell OBS to do is, whoa, slow down on the scene switch and wait for those doors to close. And I'm giving it an exact time to wait until those doors are closed, until it's time to switch the scene. So I'm going with 1200. Um, also, if the transition does have audio, you're going to want to switch this to monitor only to make sure that you can hear the audio. This particular transition does not have audio, so I'll keep that off. Now, I've set it to 1200. In theory, we shouldn't be able to see the switch from A to B now. It will be hidden behind the logo. Let's see if it worked. Awesome. There we go. And that is your Stinger transition. Like I said, most Stinger transitions these days have a transition point of 1200 milliseconds. If it doesn't look right to you, just have a play around with that transition point time and you should be able to find the correct time for you and your Stinger transition. Uh, just for, you know, uh, just to be devil's advocate, let's try and use a different Stinger. Uh, let's go browse and let's go, I don't know, let's go Man United and just see if it works the same way. This is a different Stinger, same transition point, scene two to scene one. And there we have it, the same Stinger transition. Most people get their own stingers made up, customized to have their own logo on screen. And it will work something similar to this. Something will close, your logo will spin or do some amazing animatronics, and then it will open again and show your second scene. You can get those made on websites such as Upwork or Fiverr, um, and they do look really cool. They add a definite professional feel to your streams. Have a play with Stinger Transitions because they are much, much better than the default transitions you are given in OBS Studio.